Number 94. Write a symbol for each of the following neutral isotopes. Include the atomic number and mass number for each. And then I have A through D. So I'm going to just write over here on the left-hand side, A, B, C, and D. Okay. So we need to write a symbol. So just remember that a symbol should include the atomic number and the mass number. All right. So if I just put over here that X is the symbol for my element, which could be Li for lithium or Be for beryllium, your Z number goes on the top. So I'll just put Z on the top and A on the bottom. Z is always the mass number. A is always your atomic number. All right. So what are the difference between these two? Atomic number, or if I just highlight it over here, atomic number is the number of protons. Now, they say that it's neutral, right? So that means that the number of positives should equal the, neg the number of negatives, right? And the positives are protons in your subatomic particles, and the negatives are electrons, right? Electrons are always negative. So if they're saying that they're neutral, the number of protons should equal the number of electrons for a given element. What is the mass number? The mass number is always what's inside the nucleus, right? So that's where most of the mass is, hence why it's a mass number. So this is always equal to the two sub subatomic particles that are in the nucleus, which is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So that's when you use the neutrons for your mass number. All right, so let's get started. A, the uh, calcogen with the mass number of 125. All right, well, where is the calcogen group? I like to look at it as ogen, right? Ogen looks very close to oxygen. So if you can't remember calcogen, just look at the ogen at the end. That kind of looks like oxygen. So this is oxygen's group. So oxygen is right here. This is basically all of the calcogen group from oxygen all the way down to polonium. And LV, livermorium, is not cal uh, classified as a calcogen as of right now in 2020. IUPAC still needs to do more testing and characterizing that element. And just know that for all the ones that are not colored as of 2020, so that includes these and these, they are not part of any group names or period names. All right. So these are your calcogens. All right. So the calcogen with the mass number of 125. Well, that doesn't really tell me much, but I know that whatever it's going to be, the 125 should be in the upper left-hand corner because that's the mass number. But now if I scan here, I don't really see a 125. I have a 16 for oxygen. I have a 32 for sulfur. Mass numbers should be very, 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 very close to the average masses that are found on the periodic table. 125 looks very similar to 127.6. So we can assume correctly that this element is tellurium because the mass numbers are super, super close. So for A, it's Te. Now they want the atomic number and the mass number. We have to go by the mass number that they gave us of 127, uh, 125. That goes on the top. We can't use the 127 because that's not what they gave us. But we can use the atomic number. The atomic number will never, ever, 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 ever change for a given element. So the 52 will still go on the bottom. That's how many protons there are. And that's how many neutrons there are. So that's the answer for A. Next, they say for B, the halogen whose longest lived isotope is radioactive. Okay, where are the halogens? Halogens are the group right next door to the calcogens. That's group 17. So from fluorine all the way down to AT. And once again, TS is not part of the halogens because IUPAC still needs to categorize it. So these are your halogens. And they want to know the longest lived isotope is radioactive. Well... 
they didn't really give us much, but we can tell that as you go down a group, these elements become more and more and more and more unstable. And more unstable an element is, the better chance that it will become radioactive or very, very, very disruptive, right? Uranium is super radioactive. Uranium's all the way down here. So, which one do you think it would be? It would probably be the one, it would definitely be the one that's all the way at the bottom. So it would be AT, ast um, astenine, yeah. So this would be AT. But now we need the mass number and the atomic number. Well, the mass number would be, actually, the atomic number would be 85, because that's the number of protons. So 85 goes on the bottom. And this one, they're giving you a roundabout number. Do you see how the one... The 210 is in like a bracket here. This means that, relatively speaking, it's roughly around 210, the mass. So that would go on the top because they didn't give me any other information in B as to what the mass would be. So that's the answer for B. Next one, C. We want the noble gas used in lightning, or used in lighting, sorry about that, with 10 electrons and 10 neutrons. Well, where are the noble gases? It's to the, the right of halogens. So we got three groups in a row. This is the halogens. Oh, sorry, this is the noble gases from helium all the way down to radon. Remember, this element is not part of the noble gases as of 2020. So this is your noble gases. Now, they don't tell us the atomic number, but remember, the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, which equals the number of electrons because it's neutral. They told us over here that all these are neutral. So, 10 electrons equals 10 protons. So now I scan my noble gases, and it looks like 10 is right here. So that's actually neon. So NE would be my symbol. 10 goes on the bottom because that's the atomic number. And mass number is protons plus neutrons. 10 protons, 10 neutrons. We add those two together. So we get 20 as my mass number. Box that answer off. So these two are done. And then last but not least, D. They say the lightest alkali metal, alkali metal with three neutrons. Well, where are your alkali metals? That's now all the way on the left-hand side. That's this group, from lithium all the way down to francium. Now, there's a catch with the alkali metals, which I'm sure that you just saw, that I did not include hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen is a non-metal. So how could hydrogen be classified as an alkali metal? They're two totally different things. So all of these, from lithium all the way down to francium, those are your alkali metals. Okay. Now they say that they want the lightest one. The lightest one would have the least amount of mass. And the higher up you go on the periodic table, you get lighter and lighter and lighter, right? Lithium is 6.94 mass number, then 22.99. 39.10. So as you can see, lithium would be the lightest alkali metal. So I know that that's the symbol here. And atomic number never changes. So lithium would have an atomic number of three. And that means that it should be three protons. So 3p. We have to find the mass number. They told us that there is three neutrons. So three protons plus three neutrons will get us a mass number of six. And that's the number that goes on the top and box that answer off. That's the answer, all right? So, oh yeah, and then check this one off. I just like to see all the checks. <laughs> okay, so hopefully this helped. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel. It would help us grow a lot. Get get out to you know everybody that's using the chemistry uh, OpenStax textbook. And also, we're, uh, my brother's doing physics right now. So probably next year, if you are using OpenStax physics, he'll be there for you guys too, all right? So. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you in number 95. Happy studying.